Everybody, we are back with another review, and today we're going to be checking out something pretty cool. I 3D printed some shoes, so without further ado, let's hop right into this review. So these are the Cloudberry uh, Whaleberries. That's the uh, the model, the Whaleberry, and they have three models on their Maker World profile, which is um, something that was recently released with the H2D Bamboo Lab printer. Uh, they had like a helmet that that the printer had included with uh, like the package was showing off the features and the shoes were one of them uh, because it's able to print a specific type of TPU. These are printed with TPU and we are going to see some other cool stuff I printed with TPU, but straight out the gate, let's just check these out and how cool they actually look. Um, the other ones that they have, like uh, one of them looks, it's called like the cloud it has or the cloudberry cloud. It has like a little Nimbus look like you're walking on clouds. So interesting. Uh, these were the most like, normal looking casual shoe like a walking shoe so i'm like let me print those out and check them out now you can kind of see here there's a little bit of a ridge of bump that's from when i walked in these and like you know when you press and you you flex it i don't want to like i can't really bend it but um yeah when you flex it and bend it from walking in it i wore socks in these so i didn't really feel any rubbing which is kind of nice the interior has like a nice mesh feel to it it's actually quite smooth in there you see some laces on top. I just drew some regular standard laces so you can get a feel for what it looks like and like how they actually lace up. Tongue is attached um, on the side here. So it's like right around here it attaches. So it is like a free moving tongue, which is nice. You can see all the aeration through here on the sole and also up here. So you're getting that breathability and you're not getting like plastic sweat feet. You can kind of see it's a little jacked up in some places. It's from me walking around outside. I tried to clean them up so you can kind of see, but it does have traction um on the bottom here now i would say this is definitely a shoe you would want to wear like in um a non-moist environment because you will slip pretty easily if this is like uh, muddy um there's ice um snow anything like pretty much like wet is not going to be cool with this um you'll slip and bust your butt but um walking around the house mm, hardwood floors i didn't really have an issue walking on our floors the hardwood ones, um, we have wood laminate in one of the other rooms. That didn't have a problem on that. Carpet was fine. So, yeah, walking on inside was pretty good. But if you walk, walk on something wet inside, I don't know if it's going to be such a good a good move to, to slide on these. So I would say the only thing that I would I would probably like say is not the best is the traction on these. Uh, if you're walking around on like gravel or sand or like kind of just walking on a trail or going out to the park, these are totally cool to wear. But if you're walking like around town or something like that, I would be very careful like where I step and I'd be kind of walking on glass with these because you, you definitely could slip. So maybe some form of like altering the traction on these. Like I said, you can see kind of where it's a little jacked up for me walking around outside on my gravel um, and in the grass and stuff, but really cool. I mean, again, I was able to fit a 12 on my build plate. So if you, if you have a night, if you have a model for 13 somewhere uploaded, share it for me, please. Um, cause then I could probably scale it down a little bit more and get like a 12 and a half out of these. Um, 12 fits good. That's what I normally wear, but it would be nice in these to get a little bit bigger because I'm wearing these with socks and the socks add a little bit of thickness to it. So it makes it a little bit tight, um, for the 12. So anyway, if you have 13, holla at your boy, let me know. But these are pretty cool. Like I said, these are all in gray. It's shiny like that because that's what that TPU looks like when you when you run it. These were run on an angle. They were actually cross cross angled like this, um, going up the build plate, which is pretty cool. But like I said, three D printed shoes, freaking a right. Now let's talk about the cost. Um, these took almost an entire spool. The spool was like thirteen dollars. So printed shoes for thirteen bucks. Uh, laces are like four dollars. So for like around fifteen bucks. 15 to $17, you can have a 3D printed pair of shoes for yourself. So that's pretty cool. Where would these come in functionally? Um, I think these would be really good for like kids. Um, water shoes, stuff like that. You can print versions um, of, their, of their shoes and create your own. Um, and as people create more shoes, you can basically, you know, select from those models. But I think like specific instances, I don't know if I'd, I'd have like a complete walk around shoe where I'm going to go out on the town and try to go through the whole day wearing these. You know what I mean? That would be something that I don't know if I would do. But for like specific events, like I said, like water shoes or maybe walking at the park or something like that. Or if you want to go to like a, you want to go to like an event or like a party or something, you want to wear some 3D printed shoes and just be like the talk of the party um, for like a couple hours, that might be good. Again, I don't know how the wearability on your ankles, 
the back here, the heel, you know, the toe right here, if it's going to pinch over time, you know what I'm saying? I only wore them for like 15, 20 minutes outside and inside. And I'm not really looking to wear these for like four or five hours. I think there is videos of people wearing 3D printed shoes for that long uh, and kind of talking about it and showing you. But yeah, not here. They just look cool. I think they look cool and they work. They fit me. Um, like I said, for a specific purpose, I'm going to probably change out the laces. I got another roll of gradient TPU coming which is going to be cool. It's like a fade. Um, it's a blue that fades to like a white. So when those print on an angle like that, the shoe is basically going to be like blue towards the, the tip and then white towards the back. So I think that's going to be pretty neat. But yeah, TPU is what I used for this. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple other things I printed in TPU when I was kind of going through this little phase with making these, these shoes. Uh, first thing I obviously printed was a Benchy because I mean like, yeah, a Benchy you can like bend that's pretty cool so i tpu printed a benji which is really neat um i started printing some gaskets because that's really what i use tpu for um is gaskets um like stuff like this where you have like a container and you want to have like a gasket on there you know what i'm saying you can pr 3d print that and now you got a watertight container you got a little gully right there that you can slide that gasket in and now you got a watertight pill container so stuff like that's really good for tpu but man, there's like sports balls that people have uh, on Maker World that you can print. Like this is a nice golf ball that you can definitely practice with. This one's scaled perfectly for a golf ball, which is nice. But some of these other ones I'm going to show you after I show you the hockey puck. So you got a little hockey puck. I print it in gray. Probably should be black. Yes, yes, I get it. Um, but, you know, I airless, they call it airless hockey puck. Um, I know there's no air in a hockey puck, but... Uh, that's what they call these these types of models is airless designs, which is pretty cool. So you got a hockey puck that you can print. You even got a baseball. And this is hard enough. This is hard enough that you can crack this like a wiffle ball. Basically like a wiffle ball. Um, and this one's scaled. And all these things you can change the scalability of. Like this is a vortex, like a Nerf vortex. Um, this printed in two pieces. Printed in two pieces and screws together. And again, it's... It's that TPU, nice, really nice material. This actually flies really nice. You can get probably about 20, 30 yard throw with this, uh, pretty accurate. And the sail and the fin on this flies pretty well too. So not a lot of wobble, but I mean, yeah, it's been totally cool. You could print stuff like this all day long. And then something like this, this is a soccer ball that was created by Overture. And this is something that's, you know, it's tiny. This is how big it was that I printed it, but you can scale this up to a full-size soccer ball and they have full-size uh, basketball models as well. They have volleyballs, all kinds of stuff. Uh, that you could print and use functionally, like shoes, sporting equipment, gaskets, all printed with TPU. And it's a substance that's not more, not any more volatile than like PETG or PLA. Um, it's right in that same family of like commonly used filaments. And I, all I did was I ran a, uh, I ran a separate spool. Um, I have an AMS light hooked up to my A1, which is what I printed these in, and I ran a separate spool to run the TPU. I would not advise running TPU in the AMS units, the AMS light units. You're going to want to run a, a fifth spool on any of the uh, Core XY printers, um, and then a fifth spool, obviously, with the AMS light units if you're printing them on an A1 or an A1 Mini. Because, um, again, you could print kids' shoes uh, probably on the A1 Mini, uh, especially if you if you angled them up like that. You could probably crank out some some kid shoes um, on the A1 Mini for sure. But again, not going to work in the AMS light or the AMS unit at all. It's going to probably destroy <laughs> destroy the whole the whole setup. And plus, it's uh, it's a very spaghetti like filament. It's got a very floppy floppy vibe to it. So you're trying to feed something extremely floppy like a piece like a wet noodle through these uh, intricate pipes and mechanisms and gear sets. And so it just doesn't work. But um, yeah, if you feed it through right, you could print some really cool stuff. You will get some stringing. You can still see there's a little bit of stringing in my hockey puck there. I hit these with a heat gun. I hit all these with a heat gun. It doesn't ruin my models. It doesn't burn specific spots. I don't get heat signatures, which is really nice. As you can tell, none of my models were messed up today. The shoes, these were immaculate. They printed perfectly. And when I hit it with the heat gun, it didn't ruin these, um, which if you were to hit it with like a torch or a lighter, I mean, you're definitely going to get heat spots or irregular, irregular heat signatures when you're, when you're doing that and flashing the models. So, I mean, you could be as good as you want, but eventually something's going to happen that you're not counting on. The heat gun, it really works well on the TPU. Um, when I was printing these balls specifically, 
uh, I was, while the ball was like half printed, I came over with the heat gun and I actually flashed the inside, uh, bottom half that I was, that I had printed just so I can get all those little stringies out of there as it was printing. Um, so I live in Colorado, it's dry as heck out here. I mean, I shouldn't, I don't use filament dryer boxes, but you could also, if you're getting stringing like that, you could definitely put it in a filament dryer box for sure. So or cure it with a heat gun. Anyway, let me know down in the comments below. Long video. But what do you think of my 3D printed shoes? Are these cool? Are these whack? Would you wear these? Uh, do you agree with my assessment how these are kind of like a specialty item, like wear them for a couple hours maybe at max type of a situation, not an everyday carry type of a shoe? Let me know down in the comments below. And what do you think of all these airless sporting equipment um, and the gaskets and stuff made with TPU? Do you think this is a viable filament to, to be using for everyday things? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Want more content like this, subscribe for more, and have a great rest of your day.